Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about two subclass of T cells. One is alpha beta T cell and second is the gamma delta T cell. And this classification is based on the difference in their T cell receptor. Also, the abundance of these two subtypes of T cells are different. We are going to talk about all of that. So today's focus is gamma delta T cell and how gamma delta T cell is different from alpha beta TCR containing T cells. Generally, the T cells that we talk about, the CD4 positive or CD8 positive T cells, they are generally alpha beta TCR containing T cells and their classification is based on whether they have a CD4 receptor or a CD8 receptor. But in this case, we are going to talk about the classification based on the T cell receptor itself, not the co-receptor. Now we all know that the T cell development takes place in thymus and it takes several weeks for this development and there are several stages of the development process, right? And development takes place at different strata inside the thymus. So the first stage is called double negative stage when the commitment towards T cell lineage takes place and notch signaling has huge role to play in that. If you don't know how T cell lineage commitment takes place, I have a video on that. Click on the link in the description. Now we are going to focus on how T cell receptor rearrangement takes place and how alpha beta or gamma delta T cells are produced. So T cell even they are in the dominant negative, the double negative stage they can be divided into four substages, DN1, 2, 3 and 4 and they are identified based on different type of surface expression of receptors, a combinatorial expression. But what is important is between the stage of dominant negative, one, between the stages of double negative 1 and double negative 2, beta chain rearrangement takes place. So beta chain means that beta chain of the T cell receptor rearrangement takes place at this particular time frame. After that, after the DN4 stage, the alpha chain rearrangement takes place. So now we can see at the end of DN4 stage, alpha beta rearrangement is complete. And this might give rise to a TCR containing alpha and beta receptor, right? Later on, these receptors would be tested for their affinity towards antigen, what type of uh, antigens they are recognizing and from where. But this is the basic rearrangement process. Now what I wanted to tell you that VDJ recombination is not only applicable for B cell receptors, it is also applicable for T cell receptors. So T cell receptor genes are also having VDJ segments. For example, the beta gene segments have VDJ segments, right? And they rearrange and first beta chain rearrangement takes place followed by the alpha chain rearrangement as we have already seen. Now if you look at the gene segments, then we would see there are beta alpha chain gene segments. Beta chain gene segments are very similar to the delta chain gene segments because both beta and delta chain gene segments have VDJ segments whereas alpha and gamma chain gene segments are pretty similar, both have V and J segments. So these segments can undergo recombination, right? VDJ recombination or VJ recombination and there is a probability of this recombination event. So let us talk about that. Now the alpha beta or the gamma delta TCR rearrangement have different probabilities. How? Because first of all at DN1 to DN2 transition already the beta chain rearrangement is done. Now in order to become a alpha beta T cell it only need to rearrange one chain that means the alpha chain only. But in order to become a gamma delta T cell or gamma delta TCR containing T cell, it has to rearrange two chains. Now, rearrangement of two chain is less likely than rearrangement of one chain. And as a result, gamma delta T cells comprises only 25% of the total T cell population. So they are very less in number. So it is three times more likely that a T cell would become alpha beta TCR containing T cell than a gamma delta containing T cells. It turns out during pregnancy or during the gestational period, the gamma delta T cell number is high. But as the development progress and after birth, the gamma delta T cell 
count decreased dramatically where alpha beta uh, TCR containing T cell number is increasing. Now there are quite a lot of uh, there are quite a, quite a lot of debate about their functions. What are the functions of gamma delta T cell or alpha beta T cells? But what it talk uh, what, what is known that alpha uh, beta T cells are important for combating pathogens or all of these things, whereas gamma delta T cell give immunity against protozoal infection. At least it is known in case of mice. So let's try to summarize the point between alpha beta TCRs and gamma delta TCR. So alpha beta TCR rearrangement is more likely to occur whereas gamma delta TCR rearrangement is rare and less likely to occur. And the alpha beta TCR containing T cells are higher in number compared to the gamma delta TCR containing T cells. Moreover, the alpha beta TCR are more diverse when it comes to antigen recognition compared to the gamma delta T cells. So in this video, we pretty much looked at the de uh, development of the gamma delta T cells, where they develop, and gamma delta gene rearrangement. And we also compared alpha beta T cell with gamma delta T cells and appreciated their differences. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. And do let me know in the comment, how do you like my video? Your comments give me so much positive motivation such that I can make more videos. Thank you, guys.